And welcome to Getting Started with Docs Teach, Assigning and Viewing Student Work. Uh, I am going to provide an overview of how to assign online activities on Docs Teach to your students and how they can complete the activities and turn them into you. Uh, first, I will show you how to assign activities and access your students' work in your Docs Teach account. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, now, I should point out that I have already logged in to my Docs Teach account, and I'm going to go ahead and find an activity to show you as an example. So I'm going to go find some activities here, and I'm going to search for an immigration activity. So we'll go ahead and pick this first activity here. How have Americans responded to immigration? And we have landed on the teacher page here with information about the activity and some teaching instructions. Now, if I click on either this image of the activity or this orange start activity button, which I will do now, that launches the student page. So here we are now at the student activity and the URL up here for the student activity, if you share that with your students in any way, they will come to this page where they can respond to an activity. So we're gonna just go ahead and act like a student here for a moment and imagine we're here, we, we can read the introduction to the activity. And uh, for this particular activity, we are moving documents to the scale. They can click on a document to go uh, check it out in greater detail and explore the activity or excuse me, the document, learn more about it. They can go back to their activity and place it, in this case, with this particular activity on the scale. So that's the action of this activity. They're placing documents on the scale according to which interpretation it supports. So we're gonna uh, kind of fast forward here and imagine that we are closely examining each of these documents and moving them onto to the scale to complete this activity. Now I'm just gonna, put a few of them up there, but we can imagine the student has, has looked at all these documents, moved them to the scale. They scroll down here to the when you're done section and there's some follow-up work or questions that they need to respond to. Uh, so they can type again their, their student name here and whatever response uh, they're going to to type, they can do it here. And then they would click in this to field and type in your email address. This is the email address that you have associated with your Docs Teach account. Make sure they have that and they can type it in there. Now, notice when I did that, that uh, please choose a group from the list below popped up. So within my account, I have the ability to uh, create groups of my students. So from my drop down menu, I just have period one, period four, period seven. So I'm going to imagine I'm a student in my period four class. I select that group and go ahead and send that response. It'll give me a, a confirmation that it was submitted and, and that student work has been submitted. So I'm going to close that student window now and go back to uh, my teacher page, my, my teacher account, where again I'm logged in. And I'm gonna go now and access this student work that was just submitted. So I'm gonna click on menu, and again, I'm logged into my Docs Teach account as a teacher. Click on menu, my account, and I'm gonna go down to my students' responses. And here I can see all the work that my students have submitted to me. Uh, here's the one that I just completed now, how have Americans responded to immigration. And if you look over on the side here at this uh, icon, if you click on this, it's gonna launch the student's work. And so you will notice this looks just like the page we just left. It's really a snapshot of the work. It shows uh, this image showing where they place things in the activity. And it also includes whatever they uh, responded with below any text they entered here. So you have this snapshot of every student's work right in your Docs Teach account. Now you also have uh, the ability to work with this information on this page so you could search for, for student work that's been submitted. You can uh, refine you know, by a date, for instance, if you wanted to see just work that had been submitted in the last week or the last two weeks. You can also click on group and just show uh, your students work for, you know, I have period one or period four or the examples that I have 
created here. So you can sort your, your students into groups and, and just see their work that way. You can also, uh, you also have the ability when you're done with any of these activities, you, you don't need to see them anymore. You can click next to them. And from this menu, uh, you can choose to archive them. And if you click go, then you will no longer see those activities. So if you want to keep this cleaned up to just current work, then you could you could do that. Uh, if you ever want to see that work again, however, if you just go up above here and click on show archive responses and search now, this work will reappear and you can see it. And if you look all the way on the, the right hand side, you can see these folder icons that indicate which of these activities have been archived. If you wanted to show them again, you can just click on them, click on show them from the drop down menu and click go. And now they will appear in your account again and, and you have access to them all at once again. Uh, you also have some, some more control about, uh, about your account and how uh, students send work to you. So there's this My Response Settings page. So you can either click here or another way to access it is to go to Menu, My Account, and My Response Settings. And here you can uh, change some things up if you choose. Uh, for instance, if you'd like your students to submit their work to a different email address, not the one that's associated with, with your account, uh, you could enter a different email address here and um, it will not change the email address associated with your account, uh, but it's a, a second one. Now, the def by default, you will receive an email anytime a student completes an activity. You will receive an email that has a link to that snapshot of this completed student activity. If you prefer to turn that off, you don't want to receive all those emails, and instead you would prefer to come log into your Docs Teach account and go to my students' responses to see all of their work, then you just simply uncheck this box and save your settings. You also, if you scroll down below, here you can create these groups that I was talking about. So if I want to create a new group, for instance, I just simply and type in period three, for instance, add the group. And now that's available as one of these groups. And the next time one of my students logs in and, or, excuse me, doesn't log in, but the next time they, they complete an activity, then that group will be available for them to choose. And I should mention that students don't need to log in at all. Uh, they don't need to uh, include any of their information other than their, their name, but that's, up to, to, to you and to them what they type in that field. Uh, so students do not need an account to, to uh, send you any of their work. So the next thing I'd like to show you is, uh, this is the way that you could use your Docs Teach account to receive your students' work. I'd also like to show you if you use a learning management system. So for instance, you use Google Classroom or Blackboard, Canvas, uh, Moodle, any of the learning management systems or LMSs uh, that your school or district might have, uh, I'll show you how to assign work that way. So again, I'm gonna go back to activities. I'm gonna go ahead and find that same activity we were just working with. Here it is. And again, I'm gonna click on either the image of the activity or the start activity button to launch the student page. And I'll point you to the URL here. You can copy this URL if you use a learning management system. Any of those that I uh, listed, you can just copy this URL if you have the ability to create assignments in your learning management system. Then you just paste this URL and your students can click on this URL and it will bring them to this student page to respond to. Now, if you use Google Classroom specifically, there's a button right here above the title of the activity. If you click on that button and you are logged in to your Google account, then that will launch the Google Classroom interface and you will have the ability to include this link as an assignment in one of your units in your Google Classroom. Now, Again, we'll just kind of emulate that we are a student here a, a very, very quickly. Just pretend we have completed this activity. And again, we go down to this when you're done field where we could, the student can put in their name, 
and their response. And they can put in your email address if you'd like them to as sort of a backup to have this in your account. Uh, but also, if, if you'd rather not do that, then they actually have the, they could just leave this blank and then click on the send response button. Now, you receive a confirmation and uh, some, what you can point out to your students is that this URL, if you take a look at it, notice that it now ends in student response with a number at the end. If a student provides you with this URL, this will give you the snapshot of that particular student's work exactly as it looks on this page. So they just need to submit this URL to you. Now, if you have the ability to receive assignments in your, your, your learning management system, uh, your students can, can add assignments there. They would just need to paste in this URL to you. And once you click on that, then you will see the work that they've completed. And again, if, if you're using Google Classroom in particular, there's the Google Classroom button right above the title of the activity. Your students can click on this button if they, as long as they're signed into their Google account, it will open the Google Classroom interface and they will be able to add this as an assignment. They should add it as a link to one of the assignments that you have created in, in one of your Google Classroom units. So they just need to give you that. And, and when you get that link, again, you can click on it, you can see this snapshot exactly of their activity. All right, I'm gonna close this student activity again, and I wanna show you another way that you can assign activities to your students. I'm gonna go back and find some more activities. So back to our activity search. This time I'm gonna search for civil rights activities. And what I'm going to show you is a way to add multiple activities to a Docs Teach classroom. So if I click on this activity about the Civil Rights Act of 1964, since I am logged into my account, I have the ability to click and star this activity to bookmark it. I can choose which classroom I put it in. I'm going to just put it in my default classroom for now. I could have created a Civil Rights classroom ahead of time. Uh, but I haven't yet. What I'm going to do here, once I have added this, it takes me to my My Activities page. And I can see that this activity is here in my default classroom now. And if I want to make a civil rights classroom for my students, I can just click to create the folder. And you can see it's been created here. To move this activity that I just bookmarked into that activity, I just click from the drop down menu, I take selected items and move them to, I choose the folder civil rights, click go. And now you will see uh, that this activity is in my civil rights folder. I should note too, that you can, uh, just like I did, you can find an activity that was created by another educator, bookmark it and add it to a folder. You can also create your own activity or if you have an activity you've created, then it would also be in your default classroom and just use the same process that I just used. You just click and move it into this particular uh, classroom. I'm going to just quickly go find one other activity to add to our civil rights classroom. And I'm going to choose this activity here about Selma. And again, here I am. I'm just going to click the star and add it to a classroom. This time, when I click from this drop down menu, civil rights, my civil rights folder that I just created, that's one of the options. So I'm going to add it to, directly to that folder. And again, this is going to bring me to the My Activities page where I can see that my civil rights folder is here and has these two activities. I'll show you uh, how you can share this with your students as well. First, I'll point out there's this edit icon here where you could click to rename this folder if you ever need to. And then there's a link icon right next to it on the right that I can click on and it gives me a couple links. So the first is to share this with other teachers. So that would be if I was collaborating with fellow educators and I wanted to share these activities that would share links uh, to the 
teacher page with the teaching instructions. What we're talking about here for sharing with students is this link to share our classroom with students. And if I click on that, you can see our uh, civil rights classroom here. Now, uh, this will uh, share these activities, the student activities with, with our students. And again, if you click this URL and copy this, you can share it any way. Uh, if you you know you are using a learning management system like Blackboard or Moodle or Canvas, etc., uh, you can just paste that in, and your students will click on that link and be brought directly to this page. And if you're using Google Classroom in particular, there's a Google Classroom button right above the Civil Rights Classroom title, and you can click on that button. If, uh, again, as long as you're uh, logged into your Google account, it will open that interface and allow you to add this as an assignment uh, in one of your units in Google Classroom. And when your students click on this link, they'll be brought here. If they click on either of these activities, any of the activities in account, you'll see it brings them to the student page of the activity, just like we saw before with the immigration activity, and they can complete the activity and submit it to you using one of the, one of the ways that we uh, talked about before. One other thing I want to point out, I close the student activity, I'm back on in my account, in my activities page. You may have noticed there's also this classroom code for iPad app here. Uh, a, another way that you can share activities with your students is to create a, a classroom. And if your students have the Docs Teach app installed on their iPads, they can open that app. They can type this particular code into the iPad app and it will share just those activities that you have put into the classroom for them and they can complete those activities and, and turn them in and just like they would on the computer. Uh, so you you certainly don't need to be using the iPad app, but if your students do have that app, uh, then that's another way to do it. But Docs Teach activities work on, on the app, iPad outside of the app. Uh, they work on Chromebooks, tablets, computers. Um, you don't need the specific iPad app to, to use them on tablets. Now for, uh, so those are the, the variety of ways that you can uh, assign work to your students and they can turn them into you. I wanna show you an overview of what we've talked about here. If you click on menu, resources, and manage assignments, here you'll see some written instructions and overview, uh, much like I've talked about here today for how to assign activities to your students and how students can turn them in. Again, through your Docs Teach account, by using Google Classroom or through learning management systems or the Docs Teach app for iPad. And that's uh, the process for assigning and turning in activities. If you have any questions or comments about uh, this or anything about Docs Teach, you can always contact us using the contact us link on Docs Teach or on, on Twitter at Docs Teach. <laughs>